a good place to start is with some sort of LED displays according to the tracking. I got two different styles of LED display. And it's, oh, that one was sliced on both sides. It's getting easier also to predict what's in these envelopes because with this choice delivery and combined shipping going on with AliExpress, sometimes I get things only 10 days after I order now instead of three months. So this one's a six digit and TM1637 driver. And they didn't check off what color it is. I don't remember. I'd have to look at the order or better yet to make sure they sent the right one. I'll have to hook up a demo sketch later and maybe check off on the back. And these two are four digits. I know I bought different colors again for these with the same driver chip. I've got a project coming up where I may want to have a display like this. And also if I want to go back to having a subscribe counter for the channel, six digits is more than enough. I'm lucky to even have five digits of a subscriber count right now. So I just wanted to get a few of these on hand. Maybe I'll order more once I see how they work and get different colors again. I've got a few packages with cables in them. So these are just eighth inch tip ring sleeve that I'm using as audio cables between projects or if I need some sort of headphone jack or microphone jack connectivity options because I use these a lot and I just want spares as well as color coding capability. So there's a bunch of audio cables. Oh, there were two of these coiled ones. Then we have stripped and tinned wires on one side and NES and Super NES plugs for gamepad controllers for Nintendo and Super Nintendo on the other side. So I can plug these into the console, hook up a circuit, or just use it as a replacement cable for an existing gamepad. So I can do projects that interface with the old Nintendo consoles. Likewise, on the other side of that, these are jacks for the NES or Super NES control pad. So this would be the side that's on the game console so I can make a project and plug a controller into it. So I can experiment with both ends of a Nintendo interface. So I can put these on a PCB and then they are facing out and I can plug in a controller. And the other cables are USB-C. I have a shorter and a longer in three colors, this white, blue, and purple. Looks like this one's about three feet, so you can go normal distance to go to a charger or something. And this is again the same style I've been using. I've got one here on standby going to a charger up there, so I can have five volts to power modules. I wanted the shorter, I guess, is this maybe a foot and a half? The shorter ones I've found useful if I do have a hub right in front of me and I have a bunch of ESPs or something, I just want to be able to plug them all in and not have cables getting in the way. Some stuff here that I believe belongs all together. MCP6002, MCP6004, and these SOT23 5 pin are MCP6001. These are single, dual, and quad op amps. I haven't worked with these yet, and I don't know all the specs. And of course, considering where I bought them, I don't know if these are genuine or in spec. It's just for general purpose stuff. I'm looking more at what is the VCC I can run at, and can I get away with easily using it for single supply, and I often would like rail to rail, especially outputs, but inputs as well would be good. So if I'm powering from 5 volts and ground, it would be good if I could 
put between around ground and, and around 5 volts in, and have the output capable of going between around ground and 5 volts as well. And for some GPIO expanders, MCP23S17, so that's the SPI version of the 23017 that I've been using for a couple of years as an I2C GPIO expander. So these are the ones that have 16 I.O. and they can sync or source current. So if I need to be able to control things with current, like if I want to drive LEDs or something, this may be better than the old PCF8574 type thing. And I got some of these surface mount to dip breakout boards. It says SOT23 on this side. And then the smaller SOP. 0.5 millimeter pitch on the other side. So if I want to try one of these single op amps on a breadboard or something, I can fit a SOT23 5 pin on these and then put them in a breadboard. So that's one way to prototype these new op amps. This one is a bunch of uh, audio jacks, I believe. So these are the tip ring sleeve switched audio jacks I've been using for guitar circuits, but these have this different threaded insert for the end here. You have to thread this on so you can put an enclosure here. The jack is on the inside of the enclosure and then this inserts through the enclosure wall and you tighten this down to hold everything in place and then it's a normal looking audio jack where usually this is all just one piece and you just put this up through the enclosure wall and then you just put the nut on here to tighten it down. So the reason to have this as a threaded insert, which will get assembled through an enclosure, here is a guitar pedal I have apart. And it uses this mechanism where you have this insert right here. So the reason is when the enclosure is a tight fit, you may not have room to have a jack that has a post coming out on each side. If it was only on one side, you could angle it and put it through the wall and then drop it in. But when you have that on both sides, you can't just drop this in. But when you take these out, now this is basically flush to the circuit board. You just drop it into the tight enclosure. Then you thread in that metal part here and complete this and it's all mounted. And there's another group of packages from the same category. I'm running out of room to open stuff. Maybe I should have opened this first. Things are everywhere. I'm going to open all these things and try to figure out how it all works together. All right, so we have a couple of different size plastic bottles here, and it looks like they have nozzle tips inside. So that goes on relatively okay, and you could use that to dispense something. And I've been using one like this for flux remover. I just have a cap on there that I pull off and I just directly drop this on. And there's a bunch of those plastic caps as well in this order. So those just fit over top to seal that off. And there's these longer ones. If more control is needed, it's maybe a smaller end on there. Plus it's flexible and you can probably get in somewhere. But I don't think for now I can anticipate needing that but it's an option. And some of these syringes, as well as these couplers. So you can maybe join a couple of syringes and you can transfer things from one to the other. For example, one possibility, I won't try it right now, but if you have solder paste or this gel flux. I don't think this end is threaded, but this does fit in there. So maybe that would actually be a good enough fit that maybe you can tape it around to seal it. At least I don't 
think it's threaded. It's just spinning. So maybe you could do this and transfer between two tubes. If you have multiples that are partly full, you can just consolidate or you can transfer it into one of these and just have a whole separate thing and maybe you can put a cap on here. Depends what you want to do, but I just wanted to have some options working with all of these kind of tubes of chemicals and such. So that's another fine collection of things to restock as well as try some new things like those op amps on these little SOT breakout boards getting the USB and audio cable situation under control and being able to better dispense a bunch of workbench chemicals. Maybe I can put some isopropyl alcohol or even I have liquid flux in a jar similar to this, but it doesn't have a dispensing nozzle so I can maybe transfer a little at a time and use liquid flux in these. Always good to have options. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make all this possible.